Let me take you back to the 15th of February 2003, when two million people marched against the proposed invasion of Iraq. I, like many of you, got the bus down from Leeds to London. I never imagined that all those years later I'd be sat on the front bench in Parliament, not too far from Dennis Skinner, on the day that the leader of the Labour Party stood up and apologised to the people of Iraq, apologised to the British people, apologised to the families of British servicemen and British service women for the decision of the previous Labour leader, Tony Blair, supports George Bush's invasion of Iraq. And the truth is, sisters and brothers, that there are those in the establishment in Westminster, in the media, and maybe even a bit closer to home, <laughs> that didn't want Jeremy Corbyn to be Labour leader at all, but didn't want him to be Labour leader on the day that the Iraq inquiry was published. <laughs> the struggle that got me interested in politics, interested in class politics, interested in socialism, was the miners' strike. And who can forget the way the striking miners, women against pit closure activists, were all denounced by the establishment as brick throwers, as thugs, as bullies, and in the case of miners, as misogynists. It was totally wrong, it was totally unfair, and it was designed to turn people against them. It was designed to turn the public against them. Their only crime in the eyes of the establishment was to be a group of working class people getting together to organise for a better society and to take on the ruling elite. So, in 2016, I and others are not going to stand by whilst all of you decent women and men in this room and across the country are decried as thugs, brick throwers, misogynists and bullies. And don't forget that Labour was two points ahead in the polls on the morning of the European Union referendum results. Our position in the polls has plummeted since. Why? I can probably give you about 172 reasons why. <laughs> we are interested in winning. We've won before, we've won again. We are about winning power with principle. That's what we're about. Yeah. It's not a choice between one or the other. A 21-year-old leaving university in East Leeds or in Leeds has less chance of a council house, less chance of a mortgage, less chance of a well-paid, secure job than a 15-year-old leaving school with no qualifications had 40 years ago. And I think that our communities and our children deserve better than politicians posing for photos on former pits and factory sites telling our kids they should be grateful for minimum wage jobs. Our people deserve better than that. Leeds deserve better than that. Britain deserves better than that. And the world deserves better than that. And on the subject of Leeds, on the subject of the North. I want to scotch another myth, which I kind of managed to successfully scotch in somewhere called Salford last weekend, and that is the myth peddled by people like Polly Toynbee, that well-known proletarian in The Guardian and elsewhere, that somehow Jeremy doesn't understand working class people, that somehow it's fair to denounce Jeremy as some kind of Islington-obsessed croissant muncher. <laughs> We eat croissants in Leeds as well, and I ain't gonna be, I ain't gonna be lectured by Polly Tony on what working class people do and don't eat. If people couldn't stop Jeremy Corbyn speaking up for gay rights when they demonise him for doing it, then shadow cabinet members designing wasn't gonna make him give in either. If they couldn't stop him arguing for peace negotiations in Northern Ireland, by disgracefully defying the terrorists, then 15 shadow cabinet members designing what's going to get into shut up either. Jeremy Corbyn has showed steel. Jeremy Corbyn has showed conviction. 
Jeremy Corbyn has shown the power of ideas. I want to finish with a quote by someone from the deep south, and by that I don't mean Surrey. <laughs> I mean Martin Luther King, a truly great human being, who said, who said, a true leader doesn't follow the consensus. A true leader shapes the consensus. When I think of that quote from Martin Luther King, I don't just think of Jeremy Corbyn. I think of all of you, because you are all leaders in your community. You are all leaders collectively in our society. Political change doesn't just come from individual leaders. Political change comes when hundreds of thousands of people get together. And friends, sisters and brothers, I salute you for what you're about to do. Carry on making history.